On this day, Veterans Day, we are commemorating the service of veterans of all wars. We remember how men and women set aside their civilian pursuits to serve their nation's cause, defending the freedom of man and preserving our precious American heritage. We believe our strength on the field of battle, on the supply line which nourished our armed might lay in the just, justice of our cause against the forces of evil. We believe that our determination made us better warriors because we fought with our minds and our hearts as well as our bodies and continue to do so today. We recognize this, that service to our country and her cause does not end with termination of military service. We continue to endeavor in behalf of the honorable world peace with a feeling of profound gratitude to God and to the men and women who gave their lives as part of the cost of, our, of this noblest of causes. Out of blood and sweat, we learned of purpose, sacrifice, tolerance, bravery, and discipline. Those are solid stones upon which a great nation is built. In our continuing quest for an honorable world peace, we must cultivate these virtues. At this time, I would like to introduce the Auxiliary President, Linda Decker. Thank you. The waging of war involves more than just the combatants who fight to the death on the field of battle. The fighting forces begin at the fireside and in the hometowns. The repercussions of war's terrible brutality have chilled the heart and dimmed the hopes and dreams of many a loved one left behind on the home front. While the horrors of the battlefield may not have been our experience, we have lived with the terrifying loneliness created to answer an aggressor's challenge, and this continues even as I speak. In waging war, we have moved forward with a unity of purpose which made us strong, forgetting pettiness, egotism, and pride. Our hearts beat in tune with those of other nations fighting for freedom and the dignity and opportunity of mankind. In our constant quest for an honorable world peace, there is need for unity of purpose if we truly are to move toward a brighter tomorrow. Thank you. I'd like to introduce Acting Senior Vice Alan Swartz as the next speaker. If there be glory in war, it is the almost incredible spirit which it engenders. Men and women offer their lives, sacrifice their all with magnificent abandon. Heroism becomes contagious. Yet too, in war, greed and brutality are epidemic. Too often, it is these latter which persist in the peace that follows. Let us strive to see that the same spirit of self-sacrifice is cultivated in peace as it has been exhibited in war. It behooves us to rear new standards of success to inspire youth in peace as youth was inspired in war. Public honor must be given where, pu where public honor is due, not to the manipulator of a market, the seeker after profit, power, or position, but rather let us honor the heroes of science who alleviate human suffering and carry to the greatest heights the standards of civilization. Let us honor those in public service who do not seek how much they may secure from the nation, but how much they can give. Let us honor those who devote their lives to that education which will lead our children to live and love and laugh. As we have dreamed of doing, 
Let us honor those men who carry into ordinary affairs a life of noble idealism and sincerity, capacity for self-devotion. Let us translate the devotion of war into a devotion of peace. Let us will to live as well as die for our country. Thank you. I'd like to now introduce Paul Ng, our junior vice, as our next speaker. Courage is one of the virtues born of war. The courage individuals face danger and the courage nation to protect the weak and punish the aggressor. There is bravery to be shown in peace as well. We may recapture the courage which turn the wilderness into cities that bound men together under government. We turn slums into comfort homes, rebuild our cities, turn uncertainty to certainty. We can reach new heights of civilization an opportunity for men and women of this nation if we courage to expect to work for a better way of life. There can be romance in the courage also, the bravery that fights the political, socioeconomic, and spiritual gains may be difficult to practice. Baby unsing when achieved but it is all more worth striving for. We face a different breed of enemy today. Terrorism and enemies with weapons of mass destruction. We cannot let fear prevail. We must and will survive. Thank you. I'd now like to introduce the commander of the American Legion, Peter Necco. Thank you. Veterans Day observances, observances traditionally honor all those who have served in the U.S. military. And while we are here to honor all those great men and women today, there is another special group that we don't hear enough about. These are the veterans who have died for this country long after they stopped wearing their military uniform. While their service obligation may have expired, their love of country endures. We must honor all their families, and not just with blue and gold banners, but with compassionate hearts. Excuse me, but the wind's got the rest of it. PTSD, traumatic brain injury, and life altering war wounds not only affect the veterans, but they can also take an enormous toll on the families as well. While fewer than 10% of Americans can claim the honorable title of U.S. military veteran, this special group often provides vital services that enable our country to function. Chances are that if you surveyed your local police or fire department, you would find that a disproportionately high amount of its members are veterans. When emergency hits, it's a good chance that is a veteran at the, who is going to be a first responder. Whether it's a school teacher, construction worker, first responder, military veterans take their mission seriously. They also take their responsibility of citizenship seriously. During the 2008 presidential election, 71% of U.S. veterans cast ballots, compared to only 63% of non-veterans. We must heed the words of our first Commander-in-Chief, General George Washington, who said in 1798, the willingness with which our youth will fight in any war, no matter how justified, shall be directly proportionate to how they perceive the veterans of earlier wars were treated and appreciated by their country. 
One of their extraordinary accomplishments comes our extraordinary debt. And for those accomplishments and for the, their dedication, we must always be grateful. God bless you all. God bless the veterans. And God bless America. At this time, I would like to introduce DAV Representative Jim Woodbury. Please stand. And I'm sorry I didn't know you were coming. Could I, you? Oh. Could you stand up and give us your name, please? I'd like to recognize you. Thank you very much. In this time of peace, we can use the enabling virtues of war and put behind us its ugliness and suffering. In peace, we shall go forward together to scale new heights of achievement and unity of purpose, in sacrifice for the common good, in tolerance for those of different faiths and creeds, in bravery to fight for social and economic gains, and in the discipline of good citizenship. We must move forward in the sight of God as a strong nation in a peaceful world. If there's a female veteran here today who would like to speak at this time, please come forward. The common purpose, sharing of danger and suffering, which brings in time of war, a tolerance which adds to the cause. As we put aside the brown, blue, and green that made us one people on the battlefields, we can hold in our minds that tolerance we have achieved. In tolerance there is progress, progress toward a better and happier world. Thank you. Thank you. At this time, we all rise for taps. Present arms. All of us here at KPVM would like to thank all the veterans for their service. This is Deanne O'Donnell for News 46.